And Sean, you said we might get a dusting? Yeah, there's a good chance we could see uh, actually that. So we'll go ahead and look at our one of our weather concerns, which is winter storm watch. And that's for areas above about three to 4,000 feet, probably more than 4,000 feet. We'll at least start there, but you might get some sprinkles or some flakes down a little bit lower. And of course, that's the I-5 right there. And it was about a year ago that we had that really big bottleneck and it was all because of the snow. Now today, a little bit of rain uh, here and there, mainly trace amounts. Paso Robles wins the, uh, wins the grand prize at 0 .0 four one hundredths of an inch so it's very light but at least you got something uh, mainly the energy as we saw in that story from Tracy was up around the Sierra and of course back out toward Northern California uh, they've so far have been able to get at least uh, more rain than we have and even though they're behind at least we're getting back into the game slowly here oh hi today look at your warm spot at 72 actually Goleta beat you by two degrees everybody else mainly in the 60s so about where you should be for this time of year maybe slightly above in some areas otherwise uh, again and right where you should be expected to be in late December. Uh, humidity values at the lower levels are finally coming back in. It was just about three days ago that we had that post dry, uh, that post wind event where everything was so dry outside at night. And uh, now we're getting it back. So maybe your lips aren't quite as chapped and uh, some of our local foliage will do a little bit better. Uh, getting a little bit of dew overnight. 50s and 60s as we speak right now. Winds are mainly light, but we might get a little boost of north wind the next couple of days before, or I should say the next day before it switches a little bit more out of the south as the arrival of this right here a storm system. Now storms are all about ingredients and we have a little bit of a southerly plume right here. That's excellent. That adds to what is your triggering event, which is right here the area of low pressure. The more you can get those two together and the more you can get sort of under it is when you get your best amount of rain. So it looks like that plume not overly strong and wet, but it's enough that it's going to help to finally break down that bubble of dryness that we've been just so locked into for fall and early winter. So how much and when? Well, we'll go ahead and try to get the wind done first. And here it is right there like a wave. There it is. It lines up off the coast tomorrow. So it looks like during the daylight hours will stay dry. It moves onshore through the evening as you can see the clock at the top of the screen and then it moving uh, by early, early Monday. Everybody, including even into Southern California, should start to see the rain behind it. That's where it gets interesting. On Monday, once the system moves over, the cold portion of the core of the low will start to drift in. That's when you can start getting enough mixing where you might get a thunderhead popping up here and there. So, of course, uh, is there a flash flood watch issue right now as we sort of clear it out by Monday? And by the way, we'll get really cool and even cold by Tuesday. But getting back to what I was trying to explain is once we get that mixing of the cold air, you could get some thunder. So we could see maybe a flash flood issue developing in some of our recent burn areas. Uh, and that would be on about um, mid Monday or so, maybe or late Monday morning going into the afternoon. So we're going to have to watch that closely. Now, as far as rain totals, this has been a real uh, study in patience. The last few days, the computer has been all over the map. Now it seems to be sticking with a third of an inch near the beaches, south of Point Conception, and then more as you head farther north. Inland areas will do better, obviously, with the, the help of what we call orographic lift or the mountain slopes picking up the energy. And if we get a thunderhead here and there, you could get more than what you saw on that count. But either way, it's a decent storm. 50s and 60s tomorrow. The mornings will be cool, especially once we get beyond on the storm. In fact, they'll be cold. You talk about ski resort level temperatures probably by Tuesday morning and Wednesday. Uh, Monday, look at that. We only go into the 50s to maybe very low 60s, so it will definitely feel a little bit like winter, and it's about time. Mild start, increasing clouds. We'll see those clouds increasing for all areas. Once we get into the afternoon, they'll start to thicken up toward the evening hours, and a chance for showers, but mainly in the evening, and the farther north you go, the quicker that will happen. So let's just go ahead and say that the day will be dry, but once you get into that nighttime, expect the showers to develop, especially in the later evening and the farther north you, you will start there and we'll work our way south. Surf has also picked up and it will continue to be up over the next few days. We have a combo swell, mainly out of the north, northwest. Water is cool at 56 and a quick look at one of our other maps right here, which is the advisory map. And if that will come on, let's see if it pops in. And for some reason or another, we are stuck 
on the surf report, which I personally would not going to complain, but I would love to see one. Oh boy. Okay, that right there, Tracy, I'm going to throw it back to you. That is a computer glitch. Um, I'm not going to blame myself for that one because I know I did not do that. And I'm going to fix that and get you a seven day in just a few minutes. All right, big waves, we know. All right, thank you. Some people receive the ultimate gift this holiday. We will show you the photos to prove it. And Chinese food is popular this weekend. We'll show you the lines. That's still ahead on your local news channel live at 6.